Good morning, I'm Joe with The Color of Marriage, and I'm here to answer your questions related to being married and being a husband. So I want to welcome you to today's video. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this video. In today's video, we're going to be answering the, the, the question, how do I pray for my wife? So we're going to be answering that question in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, for allowing us to have this time in today's live Q&A for the extraordinary husband. Father, I pray that you give me, that you be a part of this. I pray that your Holy Spirit preside over this video today. I pray that you give me wisdom, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, and help me to talk and say the things that you want me to say, Father. Help that I pray that the husbands who listen to this video will get what you want from it and that they will start praying for their wives as you would have them to pray for their wives. Pray that you would draw them closer together in this group that people will start opening up, that they will start sharing with one another, that they will start seeing the importance of this group. I pray that those who need to be in this group that are not in this group will become a part of this group. And those who don't want to be in this group, that you would allow them to remove themselves from this group. And I pray that this group will become a more intimate group that's seeking to be extraordinary husbands, husbands who seek you for guidance in their marriage so that their marriage can be great over time. I just thank you for this, Lord, and I just see that this is going to happen according to your will. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again for being here in today's video. Uh, I really look forward to today's lesson because I believe it's going to help a lot of you to get things done in your marriage that you have not been able to get done before by praying for your wife, by praying in a way that helps her and when you pray in a way that helps her, it actually helps you as well. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we continue on in today's uh, live Q&A. So again, we're going to be ask, answering the question, how do I pray for my wife? How do I pray for my wife? Well, let's go ahead and get started for that. So the reason why you're going to pray for your wife is because... You know, you, you, you love your wife like Christ loved the church. And Christ prayed for the church. So therefore, this is how you pray for your wife. You pray for your wife the same way that Christ prayed for the church. Now, over in John chapter 17, uh, Jesus was praying and this was a, was a time when Jesus was about to leave, be crucified, and leave. And he wanted to make sure that, you know, his disciples were taken care of. Okay? So, he's praying to the Father. He says, Father, this is in um, verse 1, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all who have given him. So let's read that again. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh. To, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, 
the one true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Glorify, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. And that's the church. That's what he's talking about. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. The world is those who are not believers. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. All right, so God gave you your wife. Your wife belonged to God, still does, and he gave her to you. Now, they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. So this is where his prayer for them starts. I am not praying for the world. I'm not praying for not the people that's not about the, the, the that's not a part of the church. He's saying I'm praying for the world. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you gave you have given me, for they are yours. All minds are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. That means they are in here in the earth, not the world system. And I'm coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name. So that's one thing that you want to do. That's how you pray for your wife. You pray that God will protect your wife, that, you, that God will keep your wife, that God will keep her from anything that's going to bring any hurt, harm, and danger to your wife. Okay? So how do you know what's going to bring hurt, harm, and danger to your wife? Keep your eyes open and see what's going on around in your marriage. See the people who she talks to. See the things she watches on TV. See the things she reads in books. See everything that's going on with your wife. Ask God to open your eyes so that you can see these things, so that you can pray protection over your wife. See, you're interceding on the behalf of your wife. That's what you're doing. This is what Jesus did. He interceded on the behalf of the church. So you're interceding for your wife. What does interceding mean? That means you're praying on the behalf of your wife. Things that she would not pray for herself, you're praying for her so that God will start to work in her life on your behalf. See, God's not going to do anything in our lives that we don't ask him to do. He will, those necessary things that need to be done, God will do. But because we are his children, we have opened ourselves up to allow God to work in our lives. But he is, he's only going to work so far in our lives. He's not going to supersede our will in many things in our lives. And so, therefore, we have to invite God into the process, invite God to protect your wife. If she's not asking God, and maybe she is, but you're supporting the prayer if she is, but, but you are there to ask God to protect your wife. So if you know that she's hanging out with people that's not good for her, then pray that God will remove those people out of her life. And my action that you ask God to kill these people, that's not what I'm necessarily um, saying. I'm just saying, God, whatever God needs to do to move these people out of her life, that's not good for her to to do whatever that it, that is uh, to to help her to see the things that she's doing that is causing damage to her life, like the things she's watching on TV, the things she's listening to on the radio, uh, all these other things that are happening 
that she should not be taking a part of. So that's the one thing, that's one way you should pray for your wife is for God to protect her. Protect her from also you. you and say, God help me not to do anything to bring hurt, harm, or danger to my wife. Help me to walk away when I'm about to say or do something to my wife that I should not do. See, we're, we're asking God to come in and work on our behalf so that he will do the things in our lives that we don't have the capability of doing. He can remind us of these things. He can give us, he can empower us to do the things that we need to do. So I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Um, and I believe that you do. Now, for whatever reason, if you have any questions on this, please drop your questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. But that's one way for you to pray for your wife is that God will protect her. Okay? All right. So let's move. Let's keep on reading. Okay. I'm going to uh, forget what verse. I'm praying for them, for, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All are mine, and yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. So, that's another thing that you want to pray for your wife, that you two become one, that y'all become one with each other, that you also become one with God. Verse 12, while I was with them, I kept them in your name. Ask God to help you keep your wife, protect your wife. Okay? Ask God to help you keep keep her in, in, in a way that helps her to be safe in the marriage as much as possible. I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them. All right. And you need to guard your wife. And, and, and this is not in a controlling, manipulative or any other kind of way. Guard your wife the way that you are told to do so by God. And he says, not one of them have been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And he's talking about uh, Judas. Um, but now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may, be, may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, so I pray that God will give your wife joy. Pray that God will allow your wife to be in the word. And the world has hated them. Know that the world hates your wife because she's in Christ. Uh, they hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So that's another thing that you can pray for your wife about, that he, that God protects her from the enemy, Satan in the spiritual world that he uh, directs that's against God and anybody else that's being used by God. They are not of the world just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them. Sanctify them means to sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. So it's another thing you want to pray for your wife about that God will sanctify her. Sanctification is not about something fancy or something that no one can do, but they can't do it apart from God. Sanctification is God changing your wife from who she is to where God wants her, from who she is to where God wants her to be step by step. So pray that God will sanctify her, grow her in Christ. 
and, and that's through the word of God. And she, your wife cannot be sanctified and grow in Christ without being in the word. So pray that she will get in the word if she's not in the word. And y'all, and she can't do this if she's not in the church. Pray that God will send y'all to a church that y'all need to be in where y'all can fellowship if y'all not already there. Okay? Sanctification. That's another thing that you want to pray that God will do for your wife. And this is for you as well. And then verse 18. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth. So again, talks about sanctification. Um, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word. Um, so we're talking about witnessing. When we witness to other people and bring them into the church, so pray that your, your, your wife will share her faith with your children, with others as well, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love me, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know, and these know that you have sent me. I may known to them your name and i will continue to make it known that the love which you have loved me may be in them and i in them you know you see here a picture of what your marriage is about your marriage is about you and your wife glorifying god with your marriage marriage is about two people coming together to work out their differences to become one with each other so that you may glorify God with your marriage. You want to be an example to others with your marriage and you can't be that example if you're not praying for your wife. Gentlemen, fellas, husbands, pray for your wife. Now, I want to go a little bit and, and so we we see what, you know, what you should pray concerning your wife. You see, should, you see what the Bible says about this based on what Jesus did. But the Bible also says pray for others. I want to go to um, James chapter 5, verse 16. And let's read that verse. Uh, it says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So your prayer has great power if you are a righteous person. A righteous person is a person who is following God's standard, who's, who's living according to biblical principles. Uh, am I saying that you're perfect? No, you're practicing what God is asking you to do and you're intentional about doing that. So when you pray, God will heal your prayer. Remember, we talked about if you're not doing the things that you need to do with your wife, you're not treating the way that you need to treat her, that God uh, may not hear your prayer. Your prayers may be hindered. So let's not allow that to happen. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for your wife. Pray for your marriage. Pray for yourself. Pray the things that you need to pray so that God can get to working in your marriage so that your marriage can become the best that it can be. 
Now, am I saying that you will no longer have problems in your marriage when you pray for your wife? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you'll be able to overcome those difficulties a lot better and a lot quicker with the least amount of tension when you pray for your marriage, when you pray for your wife. When you know that your wife is hurting in the area, when you know that your wife needs support in the area, when you, when you know that your wife needs protection in the area, when you know that you and your wife are not one, when you know that you and your wife are having problems, when you see that God points something out to you that's going on with your wife, when your wife says something to you that's going on with her, pray for her about those specific things. Enemy doesn't want you to pray for your wife, but you need to pray for your wife when you don't feel like it. So the next question is, how often should you pray for your wife? Pray for your wife as often as possible. I'm not saying you should spend every waking hour, uh, minute, or whatever praying for your wife, but pray for your wife as God leads you to pray for your wife. As he gives you the um, revelation, pray for her. When I say revelation, I mean when he reveals to you areas in your wife's life that you need to pray for her about. When you see that your wife has an anger issue, pray for her. When you see that your wife has a respect issue, pray for her. When you see that your wife has a submission issue, pray for her. Praying invites God into the marriage so that he can work on all these situations in your marriage in a way that brings things together so that your marriage can get better. All right, fellas, so that's it for today. If you have any questions uh, concerning today's video, please put your questions in the comments. If you have any questions that I haven't gone over that you feel that you want me to go over, please put your questions in the comment. I really appreciate y'all being here. And the challenge that I put out, go ahead and look for that pinned post that I put up there that I ask you to introduce yourself. Tell, tell, tell us about yourself and what you want to get out of this group. Uh, I really appreciate y'all doing that. Uh, let's get active in this group. Let's start supporting each other so that we can see the power of God working in this group to help us as husbands be extraordinary husbands. And that's what we want to be. We want to be extraordinary husbands. Husbands who seek God to live out their marriages so that they can glorify God in their marriages. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us to have this live Q&A today on how should I pray for my wife. I pray that the husbands will understand what was said in this live Q&A and that they will do the things that they need to do to pray for their wives. Invite them to be a part of the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass. Help them to be a part of it so that they too can fellowship with other husbands who love you so that they can get encouragement from other husbands, so that they can see that they're not by themselves, so that they can encourage other husbands, so that they can bring the gift that you gave them to help other husbands, so that they can receive the things that you want them to receive, so that they can have the community that they need of with, husband, of, with a godly husband. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, fellas, until next time, Monday morning. Um, so we'll see you then. Take care.